Well, good morning. Welcome to morning prayer. Let's pray together. O oh Lord, you are our Lord, and to you we raise our voice this morning in prayer, and we open our ears to hear your voice in reading your word. Master, speak. Thy servants are listening. Amen. Read Psalm 130. No, sorry, we read Psalm 30. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have raised me up and have not let my foes triumph over me. O Lord my God, I cried out to you and you have healed me. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored me to life from among those who go down to the pit. Sing to the Lord, you servants of his. Give thanks to his holy name, for his wrath endures but the twinkling of an eye is favour for a lifetime. Heaviness may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. In my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. You, Lord, of your goodness have made my hill so strong. Then you hid your face from me, and I was utterly dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cried. To the Lord I made my supplication. What profit is there in that my blood if I should go down to the pits? Will dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, be my helper. And you have turned my mourning into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and girded me with gladness. Therefore, my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. His wrath endures for just the twinkling of an eye, his favour for a lifetime. Evidence endures for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Hallelujah. Sometimes we get proud and feel secure. In my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. Even the psalmist gave glory to the Lord. You, O Lord, of your goodness have made my hill so strong. But actually, though he was giving God praise with his lips in his heart there was that pride so God hid his face from him and he was utterly dismayed and then he called out to the Lord and learned true dependence on him let's make sure that we do not trust in ourselves have a false security but that our de dependence and security is in the Lord himself Psalm 147, beginning of verse 13 and reading down to the end of that psalm. Sing praise to the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion, for he has strengthened the bars of your gates and has blessed your children within you. He has established peace in your borders and satisfies you with the finest wheat. He sends forth his command to the earth and his word runs very swiftly. He gives snow like wool and scatters the hoarfrost like ashes. He casts down the hailstones like morsels of bread. Who can endure his frost? He sends forth his word and melts them. He blows with his wind and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and judgments to Israel. He has not dealt so with any other nation. They do not know his laws. Hallelujah. Here yeah, the psalmist gives praise to God for all of his goodness, but also acknowledges that it is God who made the choice. God chose to deal with Israel the way he did. He has not dealt so with any other nation. They do not know his laws. We give God praise that he has not dealt so with so many of our friends and neighbours, but he has called, come into our lives and spoken to us. Numbers chapter 12. While they were at Hazareth, Miriam and Aaron spoke against Moses because of the Cushite woman whom he had married, for he had indeed married a Cushite woman. And they said, Has the Lord spoken only through Moses? Has he not spoken through us also? And the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very humble, more so than anyone else on the face of the earth. Suddenly the Lord said to Moses, Aaron and Miriam, Come out, you three, to the tent of the meeting. So the three of them came out, and the Lord came down in a pillar of cloud and stood at the entrance of the tent and called Aaron and Miriam, and they both came forward, and he said, Hear my words. When there are prophets among you, 
I, the Lord, will make myself known to them in visions. I speak to them in dreams. Not so with my servant Moses. He is entrusted with all my house. With him I speak face to face, clearly, not in riddles. And he beholds the form of the Lord. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses? And the anger of the Lord was kindled against them, and he departed. When the cloud went away from, the, from over the tent, Miriam had become leprous, as white as snow. And Aaron turned towards Miriam and saw that she was leprous. Then Aaron said to Moses, O my Lord, do not punish us for a sin that we so foolishly committed. Do not let her be like one stillborn whose flesh is half consumed when he comes out of his mother's womb. And Moses cried to the Lord, O God, please heal her. But the Lord said to Moses, If her father had but spat in her face, she would not bear her shame for seven days. Let her be shut out of the camp for seven days, and after that she may be brought in again. So Miriam was shut out of the camp for seven days, and the people did not set out on the march until Miriam had been brought in again. After that the people set out from Azeroth, and camped in the wilderness of Pera. Here the uh, Moses and Aaron, Miriam and Aaron spoke out against Moses because he married a foreign woman. This indeed was uh, spoken of in the law. It was uh, something they weren't supposed to do. I guess that, that there's lots of things we could say and we could assume perhaps this woman was a convert to Judaism, whatever, but it's clearly the Lord thought Moses had done nothing wrong. Moses didn't try and defend himself when these things were being said. He was very humble. He allowed the Lord to deal with it. We must be similar in that we don't uh, always try and defend ourselves and try and put forward our case. If we're right with God, if our conscience is right with him, then let the Lord defend us, either now or on the day of judgment. Finally this morning we read from Luke chapter 5 and verses 12 through to 26. Once when he was in one of the cities, there was a man covered with leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he bowed with his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you choose, you can make me clean. Then Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him and said, I do choose, be made clean. Immediately the leprosy left him and he ordered him to tell no one. Go, he said, and show yourself to the priest. And as Moses commanded, make an offering for your cleansing, for a testimony to them. But now, more than ever, the word of, about Jesus spread abroad. Many crowds would gather to hear him and be cured of their diseases, but he would withdraw to a deserted places and pray. One day, while he was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting nearby, for they had come from every village of Galilee and Judah and from Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was with him to a heal. Just then some men came, carrying a paralysed man on a bed. They were trying to bring him in and lay him before Jesus. But finding no way in to, to bring him in, because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and let him down with his bed through the tiles into the middle of the crowd in the front of Jesus. When he saw their faith, he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven. The scribes and Pharisees began to question, Who is this who is speaking blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? When Jesus perceived their questions, he answered them, Why do you raise such questions in your heart? Which is easier to say, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Stand up and walk? But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the one who was paralysed, I say to you, Stand up and take up your bed and go to your home. Immediately he stood up before them, took what he had been lying on, and went to his home, glorifying God. Amazement seized all of them, and they glorified God, and were filled with awe, saying, We have seen strange things today. I guess that's the story we learnt in Sunday school about the friends who lowered the paralysed man through the roof. But Jesus used this story to illustrate something very powerful how great our salvation is. Was it easier, he said, to say your sins are forgiven because nobody can see the evidence of that, or to stay, stand up and walk? 
well, of course it's easy to say your sins are forgiven because no one can see the evidence. But the harder thing to say is stand up and walk. So Jesus first forgave the man's sins. When questioned, he proved that he could forgive sins by speaking to the man and asking him to get up. Which is the most easiest to say? But which is the greatest if it's true? Get up and walk or your sins are forgiven. Getting up and walk as many fits, many benefits is a great blessing for this life. That man would have been able to go out and earn his living, care for his family, have a full and satisfying life. But forgiveness of sins has benefits for all eternity. So while it may be easier to say, if true, it is the greater thing to say, your sins are forgiven. We rejoice this morning in, forgive, in forgiven sins through Jesus. Let's pray together. Lord, we give you thanks today for your goodness to us. And Lord, we lift up uh, your work in Luton. Lord, we pray for the church you've called us to be part of. And Lord, we pray that you will bless elders, deacons, leaders, uh, give wisdom in guiding your people. And Lord, we pray for the work out of Wixoms, which we support. We pray for them in their church meeting tonight as they begin to form that uh, congregation that Lord you will help them and guide them and give them strength and power to be a faithful witness to you in that village. Lord we lift up our tasks of today, the people who we are planned to see and visit, the things that we plan to do, that Lord we will know your guidance, know your empowering in Jesus name. Amen. Almighty God who through your only begotten Son Jesus Christ have overcome death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Grant that by your grace going before us, you put into our mind good desires, so by your continual help we may bring them to good effects. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia.